Hello, I hope you're well. This video tutorial is going to walk you through building the DF Robot Pirate four wheel drive mobile platform that is built specifically to work with Arduino or Arduino compatible microcontrollers. Now, as I have said in a previous review tutorial about the DF Robot Pirate, the instruction manual is actually pretty good, but it does leave out a couple steps that might end up ticking you off and requiring you to backtrack, which can waste a lot of time, and we all know time is pretty valuable. So this video is meant to be a supplement to the instruction manual. I'll go ahead and add the steps that the manual leaves out and also include some tips that I wish I would have known before I started. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's start with the tools and the stuff you'll need to go ahead and build this pirate. So according to the instruction manual, all the tools you need for this project are a pair of needle nose pliers and a Phillips screwdriver. But I had to use some wire strippers, wire snippers, a soldering iron, solder, and just a little bit of electrical tape. Now, in addition to these tools, I also needed some other components at build time in order to make the robot functional. These include an Arduino board, or Arduino compatible board, and a motor controller board, like the very common Adafruit motor board, which is the one that I'm using. Now, a lot of companies make these motor control boards, like SparkFun and Make, and even DF Robot sells one too. All the ones I've seen not only help you control DC motors, like the motors on this Pirate, but they also help you control servos and stepper motors too. They're pretty awesome. You'll also want to have five AA batteries when you assemble the platform because the battery case actually ends up fitting inside the base of the platform. So the first thing that you'll want to do is inventory all the components that you got in the box. And this is to make sure not only that you have everything you need, but also to organize them for the building process. I found that using five small cups to organize the bolts, nuts, and washers worked out great. The hardest thing to do is separate the two different types of nuts because they look so similar though one is slightly larger than the other. And it is really worth doing this ahead of time, that way you're not trying to sort them out when you actually need them. Now all the screws are the exact same, except for two, and those are pretty e easy to distinguish because they have flush heads, and you'll actually use those for mounting the battery case. Now I, I used three bowls for the different types of bolts, and then two for the different types of washers, and like I said, it worked out pretty good. The first thing to assemble is the motor assembly. It's a pretty straightforward process. Just remember, once you have the long screw through the metal base and through the motor, first you just add the flat washer, then the spring washer, and finally the nut. Now once you have both sides assembled, now is the time to solder on the wires for the motor control. For whatever reason, this step is left out of the manual. My kit came with about 42 inches of red and black wire, which is about 106 centimeters. I cut four 8-inch strips of the wire, which are about uh, 20 centimeters, one for each motor. Now, I probably could have cut these shorter, in fact, I could have gotten around, probably down to like 6 inches would have been fine. Now once you have the wires cut, you should pull apart the black wire from the red wire about half an inch down on each end, and then strip the wire to prepare for soldering. It's a 22 gauge wire and that slot worked just perfect on the strippers. So each motor has two leads attached, and they're really thin and flimsy, so you don't want to mess with them too much or they will just kind of break off, which would stink. But, you know, if that does happen, you can buy a replacement motor so you haven't lost everything. Now, it doesn't matter which wire goes on which lead, but what does matter is that every motor gets wired the same. So what I decided to do was put the red wire on the right as I was holding the motor assembly. So if you've ever boated, you may have heard the term red right returning, so I just went red on the right. Now, since the motors on each mounting plate are opposite orientation of each other, this means that the right side is switched for each motor. So as you think of the red right side, just remember that as you switch the motor, you still, even though it's opposite on the other motor, that's still the right side for that motor. The next thing we assemble is the battery holder assembly. This is where you will need the two flathead screws. So hold off on putting the batteries in since we still have to do some soldering. So now is the best time to wire up the switch. I wanted my switch to control the positive lead from the battery to the positive terminal of the control board. So cut the remaining wire into a 7 inch and 3 inch piece, then pull apart the wires and strip both ends of the red wire. Then solder the short 3 inch wire to one of the outside terminals of the switch and solder the longer wire to the center pin. The kit also comes with a power jack. Since I didn't plan to use this, I didn't wire it up. If you're looking to use this for external batteries and need a male plug to work with it, the female jack side that you get with the kit appears to have a standard 2.5 millimeter inside diameter and a 5.5 millimeter outside diameter. And that's the best that I could gauge with my calipers. Now you can go ahead and place the switch and the power jack into the front plate 
the switch has a bevel down one of the sides where that no slip washer fits in. Now I put a piece of tape next to the switch to denote the on position which is when the switch pole is pointing away from the connected outer lead. Now the base actually comes together with the front and rear base assemblies. As far as I could tell there is no up or down side to the motor assemblies so it doesn't matter which go on which side. And the same is true for the front plate that has the switch and the power jack installed in it. Right now there is no top or bottom to the base. So now take the base plate which has the battery pack attached and place it on the bottom of the platform. The base plate can go either way but you want to orient it so that the wires from the battery pack are closest to the switch in the front. Now once you have the base plate screwed in now you can go ahead and solder together the short wire from the switch to the red wire of the battery pack. When I was done with this, I used some electrical tape to cover over the soldering joint in order to insulate that exposed wire. And then at this point, you can go ahead and install the five AA batteries. Now put the base aside for a moment and grab the sensor plate assembly and the top plate. The side of the top plate that has the nuts attached to it is actually the bottom of the plate. And the front of the plate has two extra holes in it that you can find. Now this is where the sensor plate actually gets attached. And the sensor plate itself has no orientation. Now the manual doesn't depict it, but you actually need two nuts in order to connect that sensor plate to the top plate. Now this is also the time that you should connect the short copper standoffs to the top of the plate. And again, this isn't depicted in the manual, but the easiest way to tell which holes are for mounting the Arduino is just to lay your Arduino board on top of the plate and see which holes line up. The USB connector on the Arduino is going to be facing the same direction as the switch. So what you can do is use screws to screw through the bottom of the plate and those are going to connect to each of the standoffs. So now you're going to take the assembly that you just used and you're going to put it on top of the base. And you're going to want to pull the motor wires through. So you should orient the top plate so that the sensor plate is on the opposite of the on off switch. Now there is a front and back opening in the top plate and you need to be aware of which wires go to which motor. So I put the forward and rear motor wires through the forward and rear openings respectively and I tried to keep the left and right wires to their appropriate side as best I could. Now you also need to bring the black wire from the battery holder and the long red wire from the middle of the switch. You can bring these through the same hole that you brought the wires for the rear tires through. In retrospect, I think it would be smart to mark each wire with a small piece of tape to denote the wheel position it belongs to. So once you have the wires through, and the top plate screwed in, now is the time to go ahead and mount the Arduino board and the motor controller. First place your Arduino board on the standoffs. I was only able to get the front two nuts on the board securely. The other two had components in the way and I couldn't screw the nuts down, but the Arduino was still really snug so it really didn't matter to me. So now you'll want to connect in your motor controller shield on top of the Arduino. It should fit in the pins on the Arduino board. Now depending on which motor controller board you're using, will determine where you actually screw in your power and ground wires and also how you get the motors plugged in. So you need a pretty small screwdriver to raise and lower the wire holders on most of the controller boards. Since the Adafruit motor shield is so common, I'll go ahead and run through how to hook it up. First you want to make sure that the battery power is switched off. And you're going to take the black wire from the battery holder and that's going to go into the ground terminal on the motor controller board. Then take the red wire from the switch and that's going to go into the positive power terminal. So there's two connecting points for each motor and this is how I wired mine. The left rear tire I put into M1 which stands for motor 1 and I made sure that the black wire was oriented towards the inside and then the right rear tire went to M2 connector and the black wire was also oriented on the inside. And then there's a ground terminal that's left in the center and that is left unused. For the front right tire I put that into M3 again with the black wire oriented towards the inside and for the front left tire I used M4 and the black wire was also oriented towards the inside. On the Adafruit motor controller there's a place where you can attach a power jumper and what this does is it allows the battery pack power to supply battery power not only to the controller board but also down to your Arduino. So now is a good time to go ahead and attach this. And that's it for mounting and wiring up the Arduino and the motor controller board. At this point you may want to test that you have the motors attached correctly to the motor controller board by uploading a sketch to your Arduino. So I've got a simple sketch that works for the Adafruit motor library on my website. You can use that to test your setup. All it does is it just makes the four wheels rotate in the same direction. Now in order for that sketch to work, 
you're going to have to download and install the Adafruit Motor Library into your Arduino IDE. So now put the base down for a moment and grab the upper deck assembly and the three IR sensor brackets. The directions show using three bolts and nuts per bracket, but I was actually one bolt short, though two was more than enough so it really didn't matter. I also attached the extra bolt and nut and washer to the top plate just for storage and future use, otherwise I probably would have lost them by now. Now take the four long copper standoffs and screw them directly into the corners of the top plate. Then simply line that upper deck with those holes and then you just screw the upper deck right into those standoffs. So now finally we get to put on the stinking wheels. So the wheels mount with a compression fit on the motor axles. And you have to line up the motor axle, it's kind of rectangular, you line it up with the slot on the wheel. And then you have to give it a little more pressure than you might think and the wheel kind of just pops on. And you know that's pretty much it for the assembly. So I really hope this video has ended up saving you some time. In future tutorials, I'll cover making the platform actually move around, and uh, hopefully we can get it to do some cool stuff. Alright, hey, I'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye.